Hello everybody, it's Mystic and welcome to my library. If you're new here, hello. So today's episode is going to be a best and worst list for Pioneers of Olive Town, as well as my overall review of the game at the end of the video. So if you are interested in buying this game, you should check this out, see if it's worth paying for, if it's worth getting the DLC pack, all that kind of stuff. So let's get started. We'll start with the good news first. We'll start with the best parts of the game and things that I really like about Pioneers of Olive Town. And then we'll move on to the worst. And finally, the overall rating. So the best, what's really good about this game? First off, the farm is huge. You have so much space to work with with your farm. Even at the very beginning when you only have one area unlocked, you still have lots of space to get crops started, put down makers, maybe even start a little orchard for trees. But it gets even bigger because there are two other areas that you can unlock with materials or money that are going to add even more space. There is a ridiculous amount of space in this game. And it'll be perfect for, you know, being able to find space for all of your animals and all of your crops. You're going to need the space. You're going to find that you're going to be using a lot of it. It's definitely going to come in handy to have all of this space. You're also going to be unlocking new buildings and a greenhouse and stuff like that in the other areas as well. So there's lots of room to grow your farm as time goes on. The farm layout itself is also very customizable. So say you start on the first area and your coop is not really where you want it to be. Well, you can actually move the entire chicken coop to a different area. You can plan to grow crops in other areas. You can move your makers as long as you're not actually using them to make something at the time. And it's just all very easy to do. You just click one button, walk to wherever you want to put the building and then place the building down. It's great like that. There's a large assortment of animals that you can care for and you can unlock more as time goes on as well. Each season is going to unlock different animal species and different colors of animals. And there are some really cool looking ones. You can get a pink rabbit, which is pretty neat. And you can also get alpaca, you can get different kinds of cows, you can get a buffalo, you can get goats, all different kinds of animals, and they're all so hecking adorable. So you're gonna wanna try and get all of them, be a Pokemon master. On top of the large assortment of animals, you can also have a large assortment of different crops and flowers to grow. The other thing that's really neat about this game is that as you unlock more areas, there's going to be new plants to discover that once you sell those plants, you can then in turn start buying the seeds from the general store or the flower shop because they are going to unlock after they've been sold at least once, which means you're going to have a ton of variety of different crops and flowers to grow that you can then sell or give as gifts or use in cooking or making perfume or bouquets. There's so much that you can do with all of the crops. You can also have a maximum of four pets. And by pets, I mean cats and dogs. Once you unlock the largest house, you can have four. So each size house is going to allow you to have a different number of pets. The smaller house, you can have one and two with the next size up, three with the next size after that, and four with the largest house. And you can have an assortment of dogs and cats or all cats or all dogs, whatever you want. There are up to 10 marriage candidates in the base game. And there are 16 total marriage candidates if you have the expansion pass, which that's a lot of people to choose from. And if you're familiar with this series and you recognize some of the characters in the DLC, that's because they are from older Story of Seasons games. So you can kind of get some nostalgia from marrying them and getting to know them. There's a lot of people to choose from and you're not restricted by your gender. You can marry any gender and the game is not going to prevent you from doing that. The game boasts a large cast of characters. So you'll be busy making friends every day and you're gonna wanna make sure you get to know everyone because there are also some really adorable and well-written cutscenes for every character in this game. Even the ones you're not going to be romancing, you will get cutscenes for everyone at certain heart levels. So make sure to get to know everybody, give them gifts every day, talk to them every day. You're gonna get some really cute and sweet and sometimes even funny cutscenes by doing that. The crafting system in this game is also extremely well done. You can craft all sorts of different items and not only that, but you can also cook different items. There's a large assortment of recipes that you can make and you can even turn them into the local gourmand for some prizes, which is a lot of fun. It's kind of its own little mini game almost within this game. And I, I really like it. I like cooking in games. I like crafting in games. And you'll 
you'll be getting more recipes and more crafting items as time goes on as you level up your skills. If you are really into collecting and taking photos in games, then you're going to love the museum. This museum, if you're familiar with Stardew Valley or Animal Crossing, New Horizons, the museum is very similar to that. You can collect fish, you can take pictures of wild animals. You can also find artifacts while digging, and draining ponds and lakes that you happen to find. You can donate all of these items to the museum and then you'll be able to see them displayed. And it's just kind of cool to walk around and see everything you've collected. So if you're one of those people that likes to have a nice collection, this one's a great one to do. The achievement list in this game is also really in depth and it's a lot of fun to work on if you're an achievement hunter because you also not only get the sense of accomplishment by getting all of these different achievements, but you also get prizes for these achievements. If you go into the town hall, you can collect rewards for finishing achievements, many of which you can sell for more money. You can use them to grow more crops. You can use them to make new things. There's all sorts of stuff that you can get from finishing an achievement. So it's in your benefit to actually do them. Even if you're not an achievement hunter, it's a lot of fun to go through and try and complete everything and get all the rewards for it as well. And finally, the other great thing about Story of Seasons Pioneers of Olive Town is the music. It's super chill and it's just great because it doesn't distract you too much from what you're doing. It just kind of blends very well in with the gameplay. It makes you a little bit more immersed and I just really like it. I thought that the music was well done. All right, so we covered all of the best things. Let's talk about some of the things that I thought maybe could have been done a little bit better and that I don't particularly like in this game. First off, there can be too much to do sometimes. Now, that may not be a bad thing for some people, but I am not the most organized when it comes to what I need to do in a game. And sometimes I can get a little stressed out if I find that I have too many things I need to do on a given day in this game. And there is, like I said, a lot to do and a lot to remember. So if you find yourself getting stressed out with all the things you need to do, or that you find that you're making too many lists and that's not really your thing with games, then maybe Maybe you won't like this. It's definitely, if you've played Stardew Valley, it's much more like Stardew Valley in that there's a lot of things that you need to do in any given day. It is not like some of the older Harvest Moon games where there was maybe less to do. There wasn't as many things that you had to remember, the places you had to go to. But if that's not really a problem for you, then I wouldn't worry about that too much. If you do opt to get the expansion pass, do note that there really wasn't a ton added for the money that you paid for. It's actually fairly expensive for the game plus expansion pass. I believe it's $60 US and the game, the base game itself is 40, which means $20 of content is what you're paying for. However, I'm not sure that you really get $20 worth. You do get three new islands that you can quote unquote explore, but I find that they're kind of small and there's nothing really new there aside from some additional characters that are from previous games and additional marriage candidates. There's no new crops, there's no new flowers, there's like no animals to take pictures of that are gonna be different from the other areas in the farm. So if you are somebody that's been playing Harvest Moon or Story of Seasons since the very beginning and you want to have that nostalgia factor of being able to marry or even get to know some characters from the older games and you want that nostalgia, then absolutely get the expansion pass. But if this is your first time playing a Story of Seasons game and you have no idea who these other characters are, you may wanna skip it. It can be a little pricey, but then it's up to you. If you'd rather have the extra space and the extra areas to look into and the new characters, then absolutely go for the $20. I'm just not sure it's worth it for what you get. The next thing that's not so great about this game is the dialogue. Now, this is not including cutscenes. but as I said in the best parts, cutscenes are great. They add a lot of personality to the characters. However, if you're just going based on the dialogue that you're going to get when you talk to everybody on a day-to-day -day basis, you're going to find it can be kind of repetitive. And all they ever really talk about is like upcoming festivals or whether or not they think the town has enough tourists. It can be kind of boring. So that is one thing to keep in mind. If you're going after dialogue, it's not the best, but it does make up for it with the cutscene. So that's something to keep in mind. The other thing that I find really kind of frustrating about this game is how quickly you're going to have respawns of rocks and trees and weeds on your farm. Something that's kind of been a standard in these types of farming games since the very beginning is that you always have a kind of dilapidated and rundown farm that you have to clear out 
out to make room for props and animals and all that kind of stuff. And that's great. I love that sense of completion and like achievement of being able to clean out my farm and have a nice area where I have my crops and my barn and all that kind of stuff. However, that doesn't really happen in this game. Yes, you can clear out the entire area of your farm, but in like the next day, you're going to have a bunch of rocks and trees and weeds back. Now I know that in the past in other games, they do, these items do grow back and respawn over time, but I feel like in Pioneers of Olive Town, they actually come back a little too quickly so that all of that progress that you made kind of feels like it wasn't progress at all. Along with that, because everything grows back so quickly and you're constantly adding more items and more things to your farm and your field, you're getting new barns, you're getting new crops, you're adding new trees, you've got more makers this is going to increase the load time and it's going to cause some fps drops as you're playing so keep in mind that if you have a lot of stuff in a given area of your farm you're probably going to have some graphical issues you might have some lag another thing that is a little frustrating and i talked about being able to customize the look of the exterior of your farm at the beginning of this video however decorating the interior of your house is a little wonky you only have certain options on where you can put furniture that is indicated by like a, a yellow glowing box. And so you can't really customize the inside of the house as much as you could if you're playing like Animal Crossing or Stardew Valley where you basically can put stuff anywhere. In this game, you can only put furniture in certain spots and sometimes those spots don't make a ton of sense. And finally, the last thing that I think could really be improved upon and the devs have actually done some improvements on this. So it's gotten a little bit better, but it's still not to the point that other games have them. And that is festivals. Festivals, I feel are not as fun as they could be. There are some festivals that are just cutscenes and you're not actively like interacting with the festival itself. You're interacting with the villagers, you're talking to them, but there's no like actual interaction with the festival. So there's, for example, there's an egg hunt and you can find eggs, but you're not actually going around to find eggs like you did in Stardew Valley's egg hunt. You're just kind of in a cutscene watching your character find the eggs. And if they're married, they're finding the eggs with their spouse. If they're not married, they're finding the eggs with Cindy and Mikey, who are the two little kids in town. But there's not a lot of interaction there. And I feel like that's something that could have been more well done. Some festivals do have interaction, but a lot of them are just simple button mashing. For instance, the pet races, you're just kind of mashing a button to try and get your pet to go a little bit faster so that they can complete the race. Overall, festivals could have been a little bit better. Now, this all being said, I really like Story of Seasons Pioneers of All of Town. I think it is one of the best additions to this franchise to date. There is, like I said, so much to do. There's a lot of people to talk to. There's a lot of crops, lots of customers customization of the farm exterior itself. All in all, this is a great game and I do recommend getting it. Maybe not the DLC pack, but I do recommend getting the base game. If you're looking for just a cozy, chill farming game to play, I do think you're going to like this. It is now available not only on the Switch, but also on Steam. So if you don't have a Switch and you still wanna play it, you can get it on Steam. Overall, I think this game warrants four books out of five. So hopefully you all enjoyed this list and review of Story of Seasons, Pioneers of Olive Town. I really enjoyed making this. I'm kind of looking to do more of these as time goes on, not only for games, but also for books. And yeah, you can follow me on Twitter, you can join my Discord and you can become a channel member here, which is an optional $1.99 or $4.99 a month by clicking the join button down below. And don't forget, if you like this video and you wanna see more, please consider subscribing and hitting the like button. Also feel free to comment down below some of the things you like and don't like about this game. I'm really curious to hear what everybody else has to say as well. So until next time, I hope you all have a great day and I will see you later. Bye.